Hi, welcome back to Kolsky RC. Something a little bit different today. So, as the title suggests, this printer is under £80 and it has one use for me and that is to print TPU. So, I already own a few printers. I've got the Flash Forge Adventurer, I've got a Tronxy, I've recently got the um, Ender 5, which after you've done a couple of mods to it is a superb printer. But I didn't want to keep messing around with filament, messing, changing around and having to set it up each time for different. So I want one for PLA, but I wanted something to do with TPU. TPU can be a little bit difficult to print. Now the difference with TPU is I'm using it for one thing and that is for camera mounts normally from my quads because they tend to smash. So if I ever crash, the first thing that goes tends to be the TPU mount for the camera. Which I'm more than happy with if I printed it myself, but when I was buying them at six, seven quid a pop, it came a bit annoying. So... I watched some videos on YouTube and they were going at 250 quid. I wanted something cheap and then I saw this and someone reviewed it at 150 pounds. So I went and looked on Google for it and you can buy it open box for 70, I think it's 78, I can't remember. There's a link down below and also the title of the printer's up there. But it's made by a company called, well I don't know who it's made by, but Monoprice sell it. It's a Delta printer, so in other words, the head comes down from the bottom, the plate's fixed and it's on these three axes here. So what I love about this printer is, that's how it comes out of the box. The only thing I did to it was, that slot's in a slot at the back, no screws, nothing. That's it. Feed your filament in and print. No setting up whatsoever. So when you buy this, it comes on, with a memory card, which, I've, which is installed in the side here. Memory card there, there's not enough switch on this, which I do find a little bit annoying. You've got your memory card here, and that just goes in here, it comes with this with it. And on here is the normal stuff. It comes with a copy of Cura. If you do buy one of these, do not update Cura. Run with the version that's on here. And that is because if you go to the setups on Cura, you will find this printer is on there. So you don't have to do anything with it. I have used the Cura preset for printing TPU. I've done nothing to this printer. I honestly do nothing apart from put the file onto Cura, cut, um, splice it, and we print it. It's got an LCD display on the front, which I'm going to show you in a moment. The reason I haven't turned it on is because this thing is noisy. It is the noisiest print I've ever heard when it's printing. There is sacrifices for the money, and that is it. I have printed in PLA with it. I printed the test, um, I think it's a little, I don't know what it is actually, a little man. I printed that with it in PLA when I first got it to set it up. Printed fine. If you buy one of these and it ever gets stuck because it's done it once to me and you have to reset everything because there's nothing you can adjust here, nothing. On the card, for the first print, you put that in and you hit print and what it will do is reset this. It'll come down, it'll measure three points on this plate which does not move. You don't adjust this and that's when it's going to get its level. So let's say something had gone wrong and this plate was a bit warped and it had gone up at one side. It's still print fine because what it's going to do is it's going to measure the three points when it comes down. It won't do that in every print. can do if you want. If you want to put the G-code in from the first print, you could do that. I did that for a couple of prints and got bored and thought, what am I doing this for? I don't need to bother, so now I don't do it. I just, I've done it once, I bang it in, hit print, and it will come down and measure three points, and that's when it will get its level for this head. That's as much as you need to do. It really is that easy. You've probably seen in the top, I've got some videos playing, I hope I have, if it's worked, when I recorded on my phone, just to show you what it prints like. Uh, I've turned the sound down, ridiculously noisy. Um, I'll tell you now, you do not want this in a room if you're doing anything else with it. I certainly couldn't print a vid uh, make a video when it's in here. Some of the other printers are quite noisy, or I thought they were. So it's even noisy when you turn it on. So I'm going to plug it in. As I say, not an off switch. I presume this is the company that made it, whatever that's 3P or something. So let me just throw that on the floor. Let me see if I can zoom in for the display. I have showed on the video, the little videos that have been playing, I think I did zoom in on the display, but there you go, you can see that. It's not a touch screen. So you've got print, preheat, and move on here. This button moves you to your certain things. So if you go to preheat, for instance, that is going to heat my nozzle to a preset. If I hit that button there, I could have changed the preset and the target for the nozzle and so forth. And then the same with the bed. And then hit start, preheat, on back. 
If I hit back, look, no touch screen. It looks like it's got a touch screen, it should have one, and it caught me out when I first got it. But it doesn't have one. Hit back and go back to your preheat. Move. So this is how you load your extruder. So if you go to extrude, extruder, and you go up or down with these buttons, it's gonna either pull it in or push it out. So you preheat and then simply, I'm not gonna do it because it's got filament in, that one to bring it, the up arrow is gonna load it, the down arrow is gonna make it come out. Simple as that. Hit back again. If I go home, it's gonna home that. But it's gonna home that so it's found its set point. To print, go back. I thought, I can't really think, still think he's got a, uh, a card, a uh, touch screen. Hit print, it's going to read my SD card, so you won't be able to read that, I don't think, from here. But that's what comes on the SD card. I haven't wiped the SD card. What you better do is probably keeping this SD card to one side so you've always got that print on there. And there's the stuff that I print. Auto, double OG. See that one that says auto, can you read, read that from? I don't know if it's in focus. Auto, double OG is the one that comes with it. It's the test print. You're going to need to keep that, and I would advise putting that on another file. Let me just zoom back out again. I'm just running a different card for your prints. Is this the best printer out there? Absolutely not. No, it isn't. It doesn't print the smoothest prints in the world. Well, I don't know. That is a lie, actually, because I've never tried to print on it in decent quality. I print it fast, and that's all I ever print. I don't go for high quality. I go for 0.12 or 1.5, sorry, so I don't go down to 0.08, which is what it'll go to. I print it at that because I want speed, and I tend to print it not even that, I don't even print it that thick, I tend to print with something like 20-30% infill because if it breaks when I have an accident, I'd rather have that on the camera, it takes all the impact and stays on the drone. It tends to just spin me GoPro or whatever I've got on the front. So these are the things it does. So as you can see, I haven't printed it in high, I've got steps, I've got everything, but I'm not bothered. All I care about is will the camera squeeze into here, and yes it does. It nicely goes into here. It's nice and squishy, I, you, and I'm using the cheapest TPU I could find. And this is stuff from Amazon that costs, I think, a 500 gram reel is 9 quid, and a 1 kilogram one is 15 quid. That's as much as I spend on it because I'm not over bothered. So I obviously printed that one, and then this one. Now, what I will tell you is, I've, you see, I've crashed this one and it didn't come off, it just made a little bit of a just sort of marked it there but it's still fine the camera isn't going to come out and like i said it's not the best quality in the world but I, I didn't want it for that i wanted to do the fastest print i could possibly do in tpu with no messing this has never ever gone wrong it, when it's it stuck once but it's never failed to print every print just prints perfectly i love this bed this stuff i thought well maybe this is going to wear out i've probably done 80 prints on this i scrape it and all sorts it's never it's not even got a mark on where you can see where scrape plastic scrape has been across it so like i said i'm not recommending this as the best printer you can buy why i'm recommending this but if you want to print these and all these are bit, i haven't gone to any hassle and made my own these are just soft thingy versus this is for the osmo action I've got a Runcam 3 one, I've got four or five of these that I have for different quads. And you can print, I have printed, but well, this isn't the one, but I have printed a new top for this. I can't remember what it's called, Sailfly X, I've got a new top for this, I've printed. It's actually, and the print actually is miles better than that one. So all in all, is it worth 80 quid? Yeah. Absolutely, 150 quid, which I think it goes through other places. I don't know. I'd have probably paid 150 for it because I wanted something to do it quick, easy, and have no hassle. 3D printing's great, but you've got to prepare to put the time into it. I don't have that time anymore. I'll mess around with the Ender because I like the quality the Ender puts out. But even with the Ender 5 brand new out of the box, I've had to do modifications. You could make this better, of course. You could put TL smoothers in here to make all your accesses better. They take a different type of one. You could replace the tube in here with Capricorn tubing. And make that a bit smoother as it comes through the extruder. But to me, absolutely no. For me, it was just great out of the box. And if you're looking for something cheap and cheerful, 
I can't highly, I can't recommend this enough. Like I say, I'm going to leave a link down below. I'm not affiliated to this company whatsoever. You can buy it off Amazon, but it's more money. I think it's 135 today on Amazon. This is an open box. This was an open box one. I don't know the difference because it came exactly like I'd have presumed the box would did and it hadn't been retaped by the looks of things. Everything was in there. You get an instruction manual with it, which is, as you can imagine, not the best in the world. You get a screwdriver. I can't remember what you got. I think you got a screwdriver and a scraper. And that's what you get in the box. It comes with no filament. You just have to have your own filament. As I say, the che I'm using cheap stuff. This is Sansmart, which is a copy of something else that's more famous. So this is Sansmart printers. This stuff's nine quid or eight pounds for 500 grams. I think this is a 500 gram one. Sorry, this is the, this is more expensive. This is a 0.25 kilogram one and I think this was nine quid just for that but I, I wanted gold for I think it was to do my flywoo video with so I could have it for, um, so I had the flywoo I think it was the flywoo I can't even remember now yeah I think it was the Mr Croc I wanted it to be gold to match the rest of it so hence why I did that one so it's noisy but it's cheap and it works Thanks ever so much for watching, you have a fantastic day.